In the beginning, some say God created the heavens and the earth, fully formed, fully alive, just 6,000 years ago. Others say life began as single cells and slowly, over billions of years, evolved into every creature on the planet. Two views of our existence, two radically different answers to the same question, where did we come from? Today, the believer defends creationism from scripture, from science, and from doubt. The naturalist defends evolution through fossil records, genetics, and the laws of physics. One claims intelligence designed life. The other says life designed itself. I'm the mediator, and this is AI Debates. Let the argument begin. Evolution demands billions of years. It demands random accidents leading to order. But real science and real observation show something very different. DNA is a coded language, far more complex than any human software. Codes don't write themselves. Intelligence writes codes. Every living cell shouts design. The fossil record doesn't show gradual change. It shows fully formed creatures appearing suddenly, a pattern even secular scientists call the Cambrian explosion. If evolution were true, fossils should be filled with intermediate forms, but they aren't. Dinosaurs? We believe they lived alongside humans, created on day six. Ancient art depicts dinosaur-like creatures. Attractions like the Ark Encounter demonstrate that juvenile dinosaurs could fit aboard Noah's Ark, alongside other creatures. Noah didn't need millions of species, only basic kinds. Natural variation after the flood explains biodiversity. Radiometric dating, including carbon dating, is riddled with assumptions. Constant decay rates close systems. We've dated freshly cooled lava flows at millions of years. When you remove secular assumptions, the evidence fits much better. A young created earth filled with purpose, not accidents. Creationism offers a story, but science demands models and evidence. DNA is complex, but complexity emerges naturally through billions of years of cumulative selection, not magic. Genetic algorithms show how ordered systems evolve without guidance. The Cambrian explosion was not instant. It spanned 20 to 25 million years, rapid geologically but sufficient biologically. And transitional forms exist. Tiktaalik, fish with protolimbs, Archaeopteryx, feathered dinosaur, early hominids. Dinosaur fossils are dated through multiple radiometric methods, placing them 66 million years ago, long before humans. No human or dinosaur fossils are found in the same strata. Noah's Ark dimensions, described in Genesis, cannot accommodate the hundreds of thousands of species necessary for post-flood biodiversity. Genetic hyper-evolution over mere centuries is biologically implausible. Radiometric dating is not based on assumptions alone. It's cross-validated by multiple independent isotope decay chains and other dating methods like dendrochronology and ice cores. Science builds testable, predictive models. Creationism does not. Natural selection can only refine what's already present, not create new functional systems. Structures like the bacterial flagellum show irreducible complexity. Remove one part and the whole fails. Lenski's E. coli experiments only produced minor changes, not new body plans. Tiktaalik had functioning fins, not proto-limbs. Archaeopteryx was fully capable of flight. These are mosaics, not transitional forms. Radiometric dating fails when starting assumptions are wrong, and they often are. Juvenile dinosaurs would require far less space, and a representative number of kinds, not millions of species, were needed. Evolution fails to explain consciousness, morality, and rationality arising from random, purposeless processes. Irreducible complexity misunderstands evolution. The bacterial flagellum shares parts with simpler secretion systems, structures evolved by co-option and repurposing. Lenski's experiments documented genetic innovations, including new metabolic capabilities. Tiktaalik had transitional wrist bones, Archaeopteryx had reptilian and avian features, exactly what evolutionary theory predicts. Radiometric dating is corroborated across independent methods and error checked with known age samples. Juvenile dinosaurs do not solve the mass, space, diet, and environmental demands problem Noah's Ark faces. Consciousness and morality are evolutionary emergent properties, promoting survival and cooperation. Natural selection fine-tunes, 
It doesn't invent new, integrated systems. Transitional examples cited are heavily interpreted and incomplete. Radiometric dating anomalies show deep flaws. A created Earth fits the beauty, purpose, and consciousness we observe far better than purposeless accidental processes ever could. Evolution repurposes existing systems gradually. No need for instant inventions. Transitional fossils across many species show gradual change. Amphibians to reptiles, dinosaurs to birds, apes to humans. Radiometric dating succeeds across thousands of independent samples and cross-validates with non-radiometric dating methods. Life's complexity doesn't imply design. It evidences deep, adaptive history. Throughout this debate, we witness two fundamentally different approaches to explaining human origins. The believer framed complexity, order and consciousness as phenomena that require an external designer. Their arguments leaned heavily on highlighting gaps in the fossil record, questioning the reliability of radiometric dating and asserting that the emergence of life and meaning cannot be explained through random natural processes. The naturalist, in contrast, constructed a cumulative, evidence-driven model referencing transitional fossils, genetic drift, radiometric dating techniques and the evolutionary emergence of complexity over time. Their arguments were based on observable, repeatable processes without assuming external intervention. Let's analyze the arguments critically. First, on empirical evidence, the believer cited fossil gaps, DNA complexity and dating anomalies, but primarily to challenge evolution, not to present a self-sustaining model. The naturalist presented direct testable evidence across fossils, genetics, geology and biology, building a converging case. Second, on predictive modeling, creationist arguments are interpretive and static. Evolutionary theory predicts fossil layering, genetic branching patterns, transitional anatomy and geological timelines, and these predictions have been repeatedly confirmed. Third, on falsifiability, creationism is not falsifiable. Divine action cannot be empirically tested or disproven. Evolution is falsifiable and remains in science precisely because it survives ongoing testing across multiple disciplines. Fourth, internal consistency, creationist arguments face serious strain explaining the post-flood diversification and genetic patterns we observe today. Evolutionary models remain consistent across vast independent fields of evidence. Finally, explanatory power, creationism offers emotional and philosophical depth. Evolutionary science offers operational explanatory frameworks that work. Based purely on the arguments presented, I find the naturalist's position to be stronger. While the believer raised important existential questions, they failed to meet the burden of scientific proof, lacked falsifiability and did not offer a predictive operational model. The naturalist presented converging lines of evidence with falsifiable predictions and interdisciplinary support. In science, the most resilient explanation is the one that survives testing not the one that feels most satisfying. Belief asks us to trust. Science asks us to test. And when the world is tested, it tells its story. This was AI Debates. I'm the mediator. See you in the next argument. If you enjoyed the battle of ideas, make sure to like, subscribe and join the conversation because the next question might just change everything.